Hello YouTube, this is Ohio Keller back, and today I've got a request from a viewer to do a insect collection update, and the collection um, has definitely grown a lot as you can see right here with the new boxes which I'll talk about, and just specimen wise the number has grown, I don't even have, I haven't counted anything yet, so... Let's just jump into it. So first, the obvious thing are the two Cornell drawers, which I got from Bioquip with the unit trays in them. We're going to start off with the beetles, which are Coleoptera. Let me get a good view here. So yeah, I've been, I've been um, collecting more, as you can see, from some temporary labels. And I have been busy... Um, getting them in a nice Cornell drawer and sorted out and gotten into family and species and everything. And I have a few new ones for Ohio that have never been seen. I've been uploading a lot of photos to iNaturalist and um, getting them ID'd and everything. So. so first off, the thing you probably saw first was this big, big green um, Buprested beetle. I should have opened this up, but eh, whatever. Normally they just kind of pop open. I'll we'll have to do a demonstration on how to keep these right. Let's see if I could do this with one hand. I don't want to break anything. So see, they pop out just like that. I'm just going to slide this over up onto my camera gear and stuff. So yeah, nice brew prestids. I actually made a homemade hanging trap out of a um. Was it out of a um, plastic bottle? I'll have to show you how to do that next spring. But yeah, the big green one I got off of Amazon for eight dollars. It comes from um, Thailand, I think, or Java, I think Java or Thailand, one of those two. And then the two with the um, temporary labels have um, what is it? They came from the hanging trap, and then that guy is an old one. And normally I do labeling in the winter, so in the next, like, in when December rolls around, I'll start labeling again. So until then, um, I'm just going to keep the temporary labels on, and I have dates and everything for all these. are all photographed and put into on my naturalist, so for records. So yeah, we have some um, darkling beetles. We have a super worm and then a... Um, what is it? A mealworm. I raised those up and then um, turned them into specimens. That's probably one of the easiest ways to start off your collection is by um, getting um, pet store bugs, trying them out on there first, see what you could do, and then moving on to wild ones. So we have multiple longhorn beetles. These guys are really cool. Yeah, and I'm collecting multiple specimens of each from different years, preferably a male and female from each year, so we can look at trends and everything. Like, here we have some um, longhorn beetles, I'm forgetting their um, name right now. But those are both on iNaturalist. And here we have some tiger beetles. I wasn't really able to collect too many. They're probably my favorite um, subfamily of beetles. They've been... They used to be, um, Cicindella days, um, in their own family, then they got lumped into the Carabids. But they're still one of my favorites. They're amazing hunters, and they're very colorful, as you can see some from the iridescent blues of the six-spotted tiger beetles. We have oblong tiger beetles, we have bronze, we have a night tiger beetle, um, which is the kind of bigger one beneath the six spotted. And then we have the um, sidewalk tiger beetles. And I was able to collect one of those and find a new population of one this year in Ohio. So then we have a bunch of others. Now we have some domestic beetles, which have ru ripped apart my um, butterfly collection. So I need to clean that up before I could show it to you guys. And then we have um, some carrion beetles, which um, 
well, one carrion beetle, which actually came off of a dead person from when I did my, um, from when I did a small internship at my school. And I've been very busy with school lately, so I really haven't been able to upload much, many videos like this. So yeah, I'm just going to scroll through. This is kind of just unsorted. I still need to figure out this guy. I think I have an idea. He's a black, um, a black, what is it called, um, firefly, but I'll have to see. This guy just, I know the family and everything, I just need to make a label for it. This is just unsorted, and I'll figure that out eventually. Some of them are up on, um, bug guides, some of them are on our naturalists, and I just, people still haven't gotten to those yet, so I'll figure it out eventually. Uh, what else? These guys are kind of cool. The net winged beetles. Here we have um, longhorn, or not longhorn, snout beetles, bark beetles. Well, bark beetles are their own thing, but yeah, I'm just going to show you guys. You can see the family names and stuff. There we have Chris and Melids. You could see the, um, what is it, this guy, the Dogbane Leaf Beetle, one of my favorites. I didn't collect one this year, surprisingly. I, I should have. But I was busy collecting so many other things, as you could see. Here we have the Scarabs. You can see a Dung Beetle right there. Well, right there and there. And then once I get them labeled and everything, I'm going to go box by box and label everything. Well, unit tray by unit tray and label them. And then, jumping back over here, we have the stag beetles, and then the best beetles. Um, I've been busy collecting ladybugs. We have one native species in there, the super small one. I need to figure out what that is. But mostly those are Asian lady beetles or six spotted. So... Yeah, they've been really invasive this year. The six spotted, they've been everywhere. I mean, not six spotted. Well, both of them are invasive, Asian and six spotted, so it doesn't matter. They've been everywhere, and I've been trying to keep down their numbers. So we're going to move on to the um, to the true bugs. I won't take the lid off for this one, but you can see we have um, the annual cicadas and periodical. I do a lot of study with one of my professors on the periodical, and we have an app called Cicada Safari, and that um, you just put in cicadas there, and it'll help locate the range, and then later we'll look at what species they are and everything, and it's been rather successful, so one of my photos is even up there of a shell. Sadly, it's down for the year because cicada season's over, but look for it next year. Because next year in Ohio was the big cicada invasion with the red-eyed cicadas, which most people know them as, which is these guys right there. And I'll be collecting hundreds of them. I'm really excited for that next year. And they do come out um, at really odd times. This year I think we had five different broods come out. So even one that was four years late in its cycle, and there's a lot of work being done with that, so... Otherwise, you just have your typical annuals. This guy failed to molt successfully, so he became a specimen. Um, we have a bunch of leaf hoppers and plant hoppers. Yeah, this needs to be worked on. This is cool because this is a hairy nipple gall um, phasmid, or I forget how you say that, but yeah, there's there's what the leaf was, and then that's the adult that popped out of it. I have a theory on how to make them pop, I just need to try it out with more. So I need to run out and collect some. Because I think you could make them hatch out um, early in captivity through um, just putting them in your fridge or freezer. And then for a few days and then removing them and see what happens. I just removed it by accident and forgot to pin it up in the collection and it popped out in the bag and I was really happy about that. So yeah, we have the stink bugs. That guy right there, the little one, where's my finger? Could possibly be a new, a possible new species for Ohio, so 
I am looking into that. I found an adult earlier, and it was a new species to me and to Ohio, so I'll have to check it out for that specimen that I got. Then we have um, the assassin bugs. My professors also might be doing a collect, doing a project on these guys, so I'm collecting them a lot. And they're going to try to breed them, so I might bring you on that journey. But yeah, they are pretty dangerous if you get bit by them. It'll be painful. It won't kill you unless you're, I believe, allergic, but that's very rare, so best not to mess with them and leave them be. Then we just have um, leaf-footed bugs on that side, harmless. And then the smaller assassin bugs don't really hurt. So here we have my dam dragonflies and damselflies. I've been mainly photographing them this year. I'll get to my photography kit soon. And um, I really haven't been collecting too much of them besides the um, besides the spread wing there, the six spotted spread or spotted spread wing. And then possibly a greater spread wing from my er earlier collection. I have not photographed that one yet enough to know what it is. But yeah, dragonflies, much hasn't changed. And then I got that one from a cousin in Michigan. Well, some family members in Michigan. So, yeah, katydids and grasshoppers really haven't changed. Did find a new guy for um, Ohio again. Um, one of the experts ID'd it for me. Let's see, where is it? It's somewhere in here, oh well. It's on iNaturalist, so that's what matters. And then in here we have the bees and wasps. They have been, um, some of them have been hurt by the dermestids, and I need to get more of these boxes. I'm trying to be careful here not to crush my open box. Um, yeah, nothing too special. I put out yellow pan traps and caught a bunch of them. Caught a bunch of stuff. So I need to, um, go through and ID that and figure it out. I wanted another cicada killer, but I've just had no luck in my yard. I only saw one, and by the time I grabbed my net, it was gone, and that was not too good. And then I worked with my professor, and... We started up a beehive at some point, and last year? Yeah, last summer. You saw videos on that, and that's part of the comb there. So that's a cool thing to show people. And then just stuff that needs labeling, and um, labeling, and then family names. So this will probably be the next thing to get a box, because this is a disaster, and Unitrails will definitely help. And then probably for... This used to be a multiple orders box. Oh, I forgot my flies. That's what I forgot. I was wondering, where are the, where are the flies and everything? So They haven't changed much either. Just added a few specimens, but I'll run over and grab that. Yeah, I got a new stick insect. No temporary label because that's on, um, that's on iNaturalist. And this one, big female, laid a whole bunch of eggs for me, around like 50. So I have those outside in a cup. Um overwintering and when they hatch in the spring if they hatch in the spring I will um, start to repopulate the area because many years ago like over 10 11 years ago I used to find walking sticks in my yard and now they've gone and this is a great chance to reintroduce them to our area so yeah I'm going to try that nothing new with the cockroaches I do have a wood roach there but I need to also stick that in the family but yeah, I um, got a, a um, what is it, a spreading board, an adjustable one. You just turn the knobs on the very ends and it changes it. And camera gear wise, you can see my big lens for birding. Uh, that's not too important right now, but macro wise, I have the Canon 100mm. Very great, I love it. On an ADD. 80D body. There you go. And then I have some extension tubes for the super small stuff. And then I could just stick that on a tripod and get some nice sharp photos. And then photo editing wise, I'm using um, Photoshop, Lightroom, and um, 
Topaz Denoise. So let me um, grab the flies quick and I'll be back. I forgot you could pause this. It's been so long since I did a YouTube video. And I've upgraded phones since then, since the last time I did my collection update. And now there's a pause function for videos, and I completely forgot that until now, so. Um, yeah. I also forgot the praying mantises. And we have Chinese mantis up top. They're invasive, so they eat our native mantises, which are the Carolinas. So, don't feel bad for killing them or keeping them as pets. I kept this guy as a pet for many years in a Starbucks. Well, not many years. Many months in a Starbucks cup. And his name is Starbucks, and he was a really good um, model for for me testing out camera, camera um, stuff. I have a really cool photo of him that is in a calendar I made. And then for the flies, these guys need to go into their own, um, need to get labeled and everything. But yeah, it's flies in multiple orders. Yeah, nothing too special. Yeah, I'm going to be graduating college this year and probably moving on to grad school. So I'm trying to get my collect my collection in order and looking nice and everything. So, so yeah, that is pretty much it. There's another quick overview of it. I should have moved those, but whatever. You saw them already. And yeah, expect more box, more of these Cornell drawers in the future. Um, I'll try to if you want to see a video on them. Um, how to maintain them and what to do exactly, um, let me know. So thanks for watching.